Hello everyone. So in the last class we learned about two methods of concentration of ores, namely hydraulic washing and magnetic separation. So today we are going to learn about the third method of concentration of ores, namely froth flotation process. And this process makes use of the difference in wetting characteristics of ore and gang particles, where the ore particles are hydrophobic and are preferentially wetted by oil. whereas the gang particles are hydrophilic and are preferentially wetted by water now as the name suggests froth flotation this process consists of formation of froth or lather and this froth or lather is quite similar to the froth that is formed when you mix soap and detergent in water now as all of us know that this froth is made up of tiny air bubbles and air is less dense than water because of less density of air these froth containing bubbles rise to the surface of water where they float on water therefore the name flotation is given to this process now let us discuss the technical details of this process of froth flotation basically in this process in the very first step the ore is finely powdered or crushed now this finely powdered or crushed ore is mixed with a small amount of water to form a slurry Then this slurry of crushed ore is introduced into a flotation cell containing water and small amount of frothing agents like pine oil. And because this ore is insoluble in water, this ore forms a suspension. Now this suspension of ore is continuously mixed or agitated with the help of a rotating paddle. Next, air is pumped into this suspension at high pressure. And because the pressure is high, this air breaks up into tiny air bubbles. which are spread throughout the volume of the suspension now as we all know that air bubbles are nothing but air trapped in water and this air is highly hydrophobic and very less dense than water because of this these air bubbles attract hydrophobic ore particles towards them where these ore particles attach themselves to these air bubbles and rise to the surface of the suspension in the form of froth Now from the surface this froth can be skimmed off and the ore particles can be recovered back. Now if you notice throughout this whole process the gang particles which are hydrophilic do not attach themselves to the air bubbles and settle down at the bottom of the tank. So in this way the ore can be separated from its gang with the help of froth flotation process. Now here I would like to pause a little bit and remind you of the process of gravity separation. In the process of gravity separation we had discussed that ore particles being more dense than the gang particles sink faster in water as compared to gang particles however here opposite is happening the ore particles are floating and the gang particles are sinking do you know why is it happening i will tell you this is because the ore particles which are more dense attach themselves to air bubbles which are less dense therefore the whole system becomes less dense than water and the air bubbles carry these more dense ore particles to the surface in the form of froth now after discussing this whole process we can make one basic conclusion and that is ores which are hydrophobic can be separated from its gang particles with the help of froth flotation process however here another question arises and that is which ores are hydrophobic well to answer this we have to go into the category of organic chemistry where compounds like benzene and toluene which contain predominantly covalent bonds are non-polar and hence hydrophobic however compounds like sodium hydroxide and sodium chloride which have a predominantly ionic character in their bonds are hydrophilic and hence are polar we will apply the same principles to ores in order to find an answer now as we have already discussed that most of the metals are present in the earth's crust in the form of their oxides sulfides and halides Now if we were to compare the electronegativities of sulfur, oxygen and halogens, we will find that sulfur is the least electronegative element. And because of this less electronegativity of sulfur, sulfide ores have a predominantly covalent character as compared to oxides and halide ores which have a predominantly ionic character. Therefore because of this predominant covalent character, sulfide ores are non-polar and hence hydrophobic. So sulfide ores like zinc blend Galena, copper pyrite and iron pyrite are concentrated by the process of froth flotation. Now let us discuss another detail of this process of froth flotation. So to carry out this process of froth flotation efficiently, 
various types of additives are added into the slurry or suspension at various stages of this process. There are basically four types of additives which are added in the process of froth flotation, namely frothers, collectors, activators and depressants. Now let us understand each of these additives in detail one by one. Now let us discuss the first category of additives namely frothers or froth stabilizers. Now we all know that the air bubbles have to attach themselves to the heavy ore particles and carry these heavy ore particles from the bulk of the suspension to the surface of the suspension. However, if these air bubbles burst in the process, then the ore particles which detach themselves from the air bubbles and fall into the bulk of the suspension and would not be separated in the process. So chemicals called frothers are added into the suspension in order to form strong air bubbles and stabilize the froth. Chemically, frothers are chemicals which have a polar head and a non-polar tail. This polar head points towards water and the non-polar tail points towards the air of the bubble, thus stabilizing the bubble. We can think of frothers as chemicals like soaps and detergents which also produce froth when added in water. So alcoholic compounds like pine oil which is nothing but alpha terpeniol and polypropylene glycols or various types of aliphatic alcohols act as frothers where the hydroxyl group acts as the polar part. Now let us discuss the next category of additives namely collectors. Now collectors are chemicals which are added into the slurry of the ore just before adding it into the flotation cell. The function of the collectors is to form a hydrophobic layer on the surface of the ores so that the attraction between air bubbles and the hydrophobic ore particles increases. Chemically, these collectors are heteropolar molecules having a polar charged group and a non-polar uncharged group. The polar charged group attaches itself to the surface of the ore particles and the non-polar uncharged group projects outwards from the surface of the ore particles. Collectively, all these non-polar groups join together in order to form a hydrophobic coating on the surface of the ore particles. This hydrophobic coating increases the interaction between the air bubbles and ore particles. Basically, we can think of collectors as wax coating on car surfaces. This wax coating makes the surface of the car hydrophobic and hence prevents the surface from rusting. Examples of collectors are xanthates like sodium ethyl xanthate, potassium isopropyl xanthate and fatty acids like oleic acid and lauric acid. Now let us discuss the next category of additives namely depressants. Now in this process of froth flotation a problem arises when minerals of similar chemical compositions like sulfides of iron, lead and zinc are introduced into the flotation cell. Each of these minerals have an equal probability of coming up as froth and it is possible that we get a mixture of these minerals in the froth rather than a single mineral. So chemicals called depressants are added to depress the floating activity of unwanted minerals so selectively we get a single mineral in the froth. So basically depressants are inorganic compounds which form a thin layer on the surface of ore particles by chemically reacting with the surface of these ore particles. This thin film or layer prevents the interaction of collectors with these ore particles and hence decreasing the flotation activity of these ore particles. So basically depressants decrease or depress the flotation activity of certain minerals so that the undepressed minerals can float out and be separated. Examples of depressants are sodium carbonate which depresses iron sulphide by forming an insoluble layer of iron carbonate on iron sulphide. Another example of depressants is sodium cyanide which depresses zinc sulphide by forming an insoluble complex layer of sodium tetracyanozincate on the surface of zinc sulphide. Now let us discuss the last category of additives namely activators. Now we know that there are chemicals called depressants which depress or decrease the interaction between collector and ore particles thus decreasing the flotation activity of ores. So we also have chemicals which increase the interaction between collector and ore particles thus increasing the flotation activity of ores. These chemicals are called activators. These activators are added into the crushed and powdered ore just before adding the collectors. Well, basically these activators react with the surface of the ore particles producing compounds which are more responsive towards collector adsorption. 
Now here I would like to highlight an important point and that is we can make use of these activators to attach certain collectors to certain ores which would not attach to these ores in the absence of these activators. So now suppose we need to carry out the flotation of zinc blend in the presence of a xanthate collector. Now when zinc sulfide layer reacts with the xanthate collector it leads to the formation of zinc xanthate. Now this layer of zinc xanthate is actually soluble in water. So this layer detaches itself from the ore and thus this xanthate collector cannot permanently bind onto the surface of zinc sulfide. To solve this problem an activator called copper sulfate is added into this. Now this copper sulfate reacts with the layer of zinc sulfide to form copper sulfide which reacts with xanthate to form copper xanthate which is insoluble in water. Now this leads to the attachment of xanthate permanently onto the surface of the ore. So in today's class we learned about a concentration method called froth flotation. This method is mainly used for the concentration of non-polar sulfide ores. In the next class we will learn about a chemical based concentration method. But before we do that let's do a quick recap of what we have learned today. Froth flotation process. This is a concentration process used for the concentration of sulfide ores. A slurry of ore along with frothers, collectors, activators and depressants is added to a flotation tank. Compressed air is pumped resulting in froth formation which carries pure ore particles to the surface. Various additives are used to carry out this process efficiently, namely frothers, collectors, depressants and activators. Frothers. These are chemicals that are added to the suspension to allow the formation of strong air bubbles and stabilize the froth. Alcoholic compounds like pine oil, polypropylene glycols and various other aliphatic alcohols are used as frothers. Collectors. The function of collector reagent is to promote affinity between mineral particles and air bubbles by the formation of a water repellent coating on the surface of the mineral particles. Example of collectors are xanthates like sodium ethyl xanthate, potassium isopropyl xanthate and fatty acids like oleic acid and lauric acid. Depressants. These are inorganic compounds which form films on the solid ore particles thereby preventing the interaction of collectors with minerals. The extra film is produced by a chemical reaction between the depressant and the surface layer of the mineral. Depressants depress or decrease the flotation of minerals. Examples of depressants are sodium carbonate which depresses iron sulfide and sodium cyanide which depresses zinc sulfide. Activators. These chemicals are added prior to collector addition to react with the mineral surface and produce compounds on the surface which are highly responsive to collector adsorption. An example of activator is copper sulfate as an activator for concentration of sphalerite in the presence of a xanthate collector.